welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, we're going to continue on with our wood trim restoration for our W126. Up next, we're going to be taking off this long central and left-hand piece here. You can see we've got some cracking. We've got some delamination, as usual. So we're going to be taking this long piece off here, and we have the service manual to tell us how to do it. So what is the first step? Remove the instrument cluster according to procedure 54-250. After that, we will remove the shutter on the instrument panel on the left-hand side, and then we'll remove the cover under the instrument panel. Uh, so let's get busy with that stuff. So basically, we're going to take out this instrument panel, and then we're going to take off this vent right here, and we've already taken the uh, panel off underneath, so we don't need to do that. The first step is to get this guy out of here, and we're going to use our special tool that we made a while back. You may remember that in a previous video. So what you do is you, you simply slip this guy up in here, okay, and you grab some of that plastic in there, you twist it, and you pull out, and you do that on both sides, and it, and it just ease it on out real easy-like. And uh, it's no big deal. And we're going to disconnect the, all the connectors on the back. We're going to get the, this uh, instrument binnacle out of here and put it in the back so you can get it out of our way. And yes, we've already disconnected the battery. So let's get started and let's get this instrument cluster out. All right, we've got our instrument cluster out. Next, we're going to take out the Venetian blinds, as they're often called in the service manual. And uh, get yourself a small flathead screwdriver and you just pry that guy out like that and you do the other one on the other side you pry it out and uh, use two hands and you just pull this right out of here so let's get this guy out of here all right there you have it one venetian blind removed from the car let's move on to the next step all right next uh, step four unscrew the nut uh, in the cutout of the shutter on instrument panel on the outside left and what they're talking about is there's going to be a threaded shaft embedded into the end of this trim work. And you can see it right here, right? There should be a nut there if no one has been in here fiddling around. And let's see what we can see. Can you see it in there? So that threaded shaft is embedded into the wooden base of the end of this panel. So let's get the proper size socket in there to see if we can get that off. I'm going to go, that's probably a 10. I'm going to go grab two or three and see what size it is and get that thing out of there. All right, so let's go ahead and get this nut off of here. This is a seven millimeter. I'm going to get this on a little quarter inch uh, ratchet. All right, we should be able to loosen this with our fingers now. All right, success. Let's set that aside and let's move on to the next step. The next step here is to unscrew the three nuts on the instrument panel inside. The nuts are accessible through a cut through a cutout for the instrument panel. A cutout. It's hmm, English is a bit of miss right there. Anyway, so I'm not going to go into English grammar on that one. This picture here is looking at that hole from the other side, right? So that's the hole for the headlight switch, which is right there. That would mean that this guy right here is on this side. So I can feel a threaded shaft, which is stuck in the wood here. I can feel it back right there next to the ignition switch. Or am I reading this incorrectly? All right, let's see. Anyway, so I feel one right here next to the ignition switch. I'm going to move over to this side because it says there's one on the corner, but I'm not entirely sure whether they're referring to the left or the right corner. So I'm going to check both corners. So let's check this corner over here. I don't see how you could get... See, because you don't have much wood to play with right there. I don't see how it can't be that corner. It's got to be the other one. All right, so let's move over here. 
and we have the big pipe there. I'm assuming that's the conduit, the uh, the wiring conduit for the uh, headlight switch. Uh, let's see if I can get in here. I'm feeling around trying to get my fingers on the back side of the wood trim, right? That's my goal. Okay, so what have I got right here? I feel something. I'm not sure what it is. Mm. All right, so the only one I've felt so far, I feel something right here, which feels like that used to be a threaded shaft there, but there's just a hole. The only one I feel is right here, and the nut is actually loose on it. So, and it feels like it's got a washer as well. Let me see if I can't get it off of there without dropping it. It wouldn't be the end of the world because if it drops, it'll just fall into the floorboard. Almost there. Almost there. There we go. And there it is. And let's see. There was a, a washer or a backing plate or something. It feels like a washer. Let's get that off of there. Come on. No big deal. I can always get another one if I was to lose it. But uh, it's amazing how you get something cattywampus on a threaded shaft and it, and it won't come off. And then it, and it finds a way to... Uh, trying to get my fingers on either side of it. There it goes. <laughs> Probably should have just let it fall to the ground initially. Boy, that floorboard's nasty. We gotta do something about that. All right. Oh, uh, let's move on. Um, so we've, we've got the end over here. We've got that loose, so that's cool. Um, the only problem is I've only been able to disconnect or find one of these. So let me hunt around a little more and see what the next see what the next step is. Unscrew the three nuts on the instrument panel inside. I've only found one nut. The one sitting in the driver's seat and the one in the car. Anyway, I guess that's two. But anyway, the nuts are accessible through a cutout through the instrument panel. All right, again, I only found one. Unscrew the three screws in the cutout for the shutter on the instrument panel. And it shows a photo here of this one screw, which is right here. It says, all right, it just shows you an example. It doesn't show you where the, all three of them are. So oh, there, there they are, they're, they're right here. You got these three screws right here. One, two, and three. So let's go ahead and get those out. All right, so I can't find all those nuts that they say are on the back of this uh, wood panel. So for now, I'm going to move forward. Uh, I did remove those three screws above the center vents over there. Let's go ahead and take the headlight switch off. Maybe that'll reveal some things for us. So let's see how... There we go. Just tug it right off of there. Okay, so next up, we have got to get that uh, big old capture nut off of there. 24 millimeter. Let's go do that. Get our socket on there. There we go. All right. There we go. Let's get this guy off of here. Right, so I'm reading these directions, and they're talking about screws that I can't find. And uh, it says, unscrew four screws on the cover at the steering lock. The screws are accessible through the leg room under instrument panel and via cutout for instrument cluster. Remove the cover at the steering lock. Uh, we're ready to pull the trim strip. It says pull trim strip in range of instrument cluster to the rear so that the screw bolts on the trim strip are sliding out of the instrument panel. When it says in range of instrument cluster, it means in this area. So this area, so in other words, it's pulled. So in other words, from here over to here, you've got to pull it out of the dash a little bit and then this whole thing is supposed to slide this way to get it out so we're going to try to do that next all right in typical fashion for all of the trim on this car this base strip right here that has the threaded shaft going through the dash has 
broken away from there. So JB Weld to the rescue. This threaded shaft here, you pull that out and slide it past it. It did go in that hole there. This, this whole thing is loose. And in theory, I should be able to take this part here and slide it to the left and get this guy out of here. All right, we got this thing off the car and over to the workbench. Let's do an initial inspection. And again, you can tell right away where the previous owner had tried to glue this back onto the car and they have leftover gluey fingerprints. There's some big globs of glue down in there. So this is what happened. You know, the previous owner probably got in there with a glue, hot glue gun, I'm guessing. And they dripped it down in there and tried to hold it. And then it just, you know, of course it just failed. Clearly the top uh, veneer will need to come off just as we did on all the rest of the uh, pieces. I would note that there is no, there does not appear to be any aluminum holding this one together, which is a little odd and different. Now the instru uh, here's another item. The instructions in the service manual said once you take the headlight switch loose and pull it free that you were supposed to remove this plastic cover from here. Well, you can't do that because it has these, these push style fasteners on the back. So this just comes off with it. Now, my car is just a 300 SD. It's not the fancy model. And there was no, there was an extra con control here, uh, which my car does not have. So you might, yours might be a little different. We have the typical staples here like we saw with the right hand side trim let's see this this threaded shaft is in here pretty solid it's not turning uh, this is broken you'll see right here that that is that's broken really good so I'm toying with the idea of not taking this side piece off because it seems to be free only at the very very corners I don't know I'll probably end up taking it off we had a threaded shaft right here but it has come loose I'm assuming someone took this out of the car at one point and broke it off and then this one well you get the point there so it looks like we had three threaded shafts one two three and we had three screws down this away. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's dive into this thing, start disassembling it, and uh, and let's move forward. Well, that was easy. There's the end piece. All right, so let's inspect this while we're at it. So this inner veneer is delaminating on the on the end. That's pretty typical from what we've seen. Uh, I'm assuming we'll we'll probably take this veneer off and we'll JB weld it back on. You'll note that the uh, the inner part of this wood is broken here, where w when somebody tightened this down. They put a little extra torque on that, and it tried to pull that threaded shaft out. So this one looks pretty good, though. I just I just feel hesitant about taking this top veneer off, but yeah, our plastic just comes right off now that the staples are off. Actually, the top veneer is broken right there. Once we start messing around with this, that'll probably just break right in two. We are going to have to just get the old heat gun out and start peeling stuff apart and and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse before it gets better.
All right, so I can't go any further with my heat gun until I get this plastic cover out. And it has these uh, little push pins or push push nuts, I guess is what they are, push nuts in place. So here's the one I haven't messed with yet. And this one, I'm just prying these tangs up a little bit. I should be able to get underneath there with a screwdriver and raise that off. So I'm going to do both of these and then get this cover off. And then I can continue on with the heat gun and get this veneer off. All right, so that was fairly uneventful. After I removed the headlight bezel, uh, which required the removal of these two uh, metal push nuts, I was able to continue using the heat gun and remove the outer veneer. We will sand down the, in, the inside of this uh, veneer and get it ready uh, for gluing. We will sand down the outside. Uh, looks like we've got a little crack here. We'll have to contend with that. Uh, we have this inside piece, which is the wood base with an outer veneer uh, attached to it. Uh, I'm not sure if we will have to completely disassemble it like we did all the rest of them. I'll have to do a very thorough inspection to see what the next step is. So we'll be back with you just shortly. All right, I think we got a little lucky on this one. For whatever reason, this or this inner layer is not delaminating from the inner wooden base. The glue seems to be holding just fine. We'll just clean this piece up and uh, get it ready for re-gluing. All right, there we go. First pass on a sanding and a heat gun treatment to get all the globbed on glue off the inner part of our wooden base. So thankfully, I do not think we will have to take this piece down as far as the others. The inner veneer is glued solidly to the inner base pieces. And I think we can stop right here. I don't think we have to take it any take it down any farther than this. All right, first step in the reconstruction is to reattach this wooden part here with the threaded shaft. So we got a little bit of quick weld we're about to mix up. I'm going to get this glued up and we'll get it clamped up with some new clamps and some new string. All right, another day has gone by and I've got some JB Weld drying over here on the other bench. So we have the outer veneer sanded. It is broken right here. We saw that crack earlier before we took this off of the car. That goes like that. We were missing a, a threaded shaft here on this side, uh, but I did. I found one. It's a, uh, a four millimeter and uh, found a little wing nut that fits it. And I think that'll, I think that'll work okay. And that's not a stock, but you know, it'll hold it just fine. Uh, of course, we've got JB Weld in there. We've already got this piece that was broken off. We've got that JB welded in there as well. So the first thing that is gonna happen after all this stuff dries is we will attach this piece of veneer to the base. Okay. So we will take this end cap and we will glue this inner veneer onto that. Once that dries, we will add in the outer veneer and we'll get that glued to it. Once all that is dry, so get that into position so that it'll basically look something like this. So the last step will be coming in here and taking this whole affair and gluing this to that, just like that. Okay, so I just sort of had to figure that gluing process out so that when you try to do this, it, you know, it, just, it didn't all fall apart. So uh, that is the plan. So I'm going to let these, uh, these threaded shafts dry a little more. And then our next up, and the next thing you'll see is uh, we're going to be gluing up this section right here. All right, well, there it is, our first gluing job. We have our veneer re-glued back onto the sub, uh, onto the base. So let's go ahead and get the string off of here and do a little sanding. And before we move on with our next phase, which is gluing on this corner piece. All right, this corner piece on the driver's side left hand corner of the dashboard is has been gluing overnight we did not remove 
the veneer on the end. It was still intact, so I left it alone. Um, the top veneer, as you can see, had a break in it, and that, I tried to glue it back, but that didn't take, so it just, it just fell apart. Uh, so we had to glue the inner veneer to the base. We did that first, and then we glued the outer veneer to that. Uh, again, there is no aluminum in this piece. Anyway, let's get the string off this little guy right here and get ready to glue it to the main part of the dash trim. All right, we've got our string off of this corner piece here and got everything sanded down really nice and smooth. I still need to do some gluing right here around this threaded shaft to ensure that this does not move because the shaft is pulled out of the wood a little bit right there. So we'll fix that with a little JB wheel. We'll mash it down in these crevices. It'll be good as new. That leaves us with this one final glue job. As you can tell, this the long piece has is done, it's dry, and now we have to get the corner piece on here and it will go, you know, something like this. We will get the uh, JB Weld on this guy and get the string on it and the clamps and whatnot and we'll let this thing sit overnight and we'll continue on in our dash wood trim restoration. All right, it's the next day and our corner piece has been gluing up to the rest of the long piece of trim here for quite some time for I think probably 14 or 16 hours. So let's go ahead and get this uh, string off and see what we have. All right, there we are. We've got the string and the clamps off. And we've got a little extra JB weld around that uh, threaded shaft on the end right there. And you can see our crack right over there. All right, so let's get some wood filler in this thing. And uh, then we'll start the staining job, which is probably the next thing you see. So we'll show you more just shortly. All right, we've applied our stainable wood filler all along the top there where we had a nice open gap. So couldn't have that. We've got to fill that in with some uh, wood filler. Hopefully the, it will take stain uh, really nicely and it won't be too visible. Uh, this crack right here, uh, well, it was broken clean in two. Actually, it wasn't a crack. So uh, that has got the wood filler in it as well. And again, hopefully the stain will take and got another little dose right there on the corner, but that won't be very visible because that'll be hidden by the dash. Uh, so next up, we're gonna get a tack rag and get all the remaining dust off of this thing. And then we're gonna start to apply some Minwax stain. All right, it's the next day. We've got our stain. It's been drying on here for about 14 hours now. So up next, we're gonna put a coat of high gloss polyurethane on. And this time, we're going to do, a little, do it a little differently. We're going to rattle can this thing. So stand by. We're going to move outdoors to our makeshift trash can paint booth. All right, here we are out at the uh, trash can paint booth. I uh, ran a tack rag over it uh, one more time to try to clean off as much dust and debris as I could. And uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't get the bugs from lighting on our work. And we're going to go ahead with a little Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane Clear Gloss. Here we go. We're going to go real easy, real nice and easy. All right, so with the spray product, I'm noticing a little bit of orange peel. The only difference is it's way easier to, to apply, but um, looks like we've got a little uh, wet sanding ahead of us here. So maybe the, some of the orange peel will kind of spread out and dissipate uh, as we dry. I haven't used the spray-on poly uh, before, so this is sort of an experiment for me. All right, well, let's just uh, let it dry and see how it works out. All right, I'm not really impressed with that first coat of gloss poly out of the spray can. I uh, left behind a lot of orange peels. So I've got a wet sanding job ahead of me with some 600 grit wet dry paper. Uh, so once I'm done wet sanding this, I'm going to go back to my original can of poly and use a lint free cloth to apply it. All right, this is our last go around. Uh, after the first coat of brush on polyurethane we did a light sanding with 220 
Uh, then we did another coat of poly, followed by a wet sanding with 600. Uh, and then another coat of poly, and then I just got through with a wet sanding with 1500, and we're going to put the last coat of poly on before we put this back on the car. All right, well, there it is. This basket of a case of a wood dash trim is back together, and our next step is to go ahead and install the little headlight escutcheon. I believe the proper word is escutcheon. And get that squared away. We also have to install the, the uh, plastic piece that goes right in here for the air conditioning vent. So we're going to get this thing prepared for reinstallation back into the car. All right, we're going to get our trim piece back in the car. All right, this is what we got so far. I still need to put the uh, nuts on the back of those threaded shafts on either side of the steering wheel. I need to put the nut on the one over there on the end, and I need to put the three screws above the air conditioning ductwork. I also need to put the cover over the ignition switch, and we need to put the nut back on the headlight switch and reinstall the headlight switch, and finally put the binnacle back in. I had to go to the parts house and get a an M4 nut for the for the threaded shaft on the on the uh, back for the threaded shaft on this side because I found a wing nut but it, there's not enough room to use that so I had to go get some from the parts house so I'm back now I'm gonna finish this thing up the next thing you're gonna see is the completed installation. Well, there you have it, folks. We've got our dash trim back in the car. We've got our air conditioning vent back in headlight switch we've got our cover around the ignition switch back in we've got the binnacle back in uh we've got the three screws above these vents over here done uh we had some changes that we made we noticed that the threaded shaft on the left hand side of the steering wheel was broken off so we found another suitable one which is an m4 by 7 uh, metric threaded shaft and we jb welded it into the wood so that it would hold and I went and I bought some more M4 uh, by 7 uh, nuts to have one to put on there. Uh, this threaded shaft over here was on a piece of wood that was actually broken. So we had to JB wheel that piece of wood back into this piece of trim. Uh, so we got that squared away. The threaded shaft over here that holds the corner on was fine. So we didn't have any issues there. This piece of trim was completely broken in half right here. I mean, this section was completely uh, you know completely removed so we had to basically reattach this thing and bring it back together we still have a little little crack right there you can see but I think it just adds a little bit of character all in all I think this turned out pretty well really uh, the dash trim on this car is solid as a rock it is not delaminated and it will never fall apart again all right everybody that's it for now I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when I upload another video, please click the little bell down below. We'll talk to you later. Have a good one.